Hi guys, Keith Argenberg Farms. Um, just spent the weekend down here at Belton, Texas, Mother Earth News Fair, did a couple presentations. Had a bunch of fun down here, it was great times. But I shot some video during uh, one of my presentations, which was how to make uh, YouTube videos for your farm and homestead. So I'm shooting the intro right now as I'm leaving and I'm gonna put together and show you what I did there. It was great fun, check it out. Hi guys, Keith Dorkenberg Farms. I'm here at the Mother Earth News Fair today down in Belton, Texas. We are actually doing a video today about how to shoot YouTube videos for your uh, home or farmstead. So, hope you come back and uh, check it out. Okay, so I spent a lot of time talking in between the footage I shot. It was an hour long presentation. So I'm gonna to try to sum this up as I go and stick the slides back in. So basically the introduction is where you gotta convince your audience to keep watching. Uh, basically, like it says, 15, 45 seconds. If you don't have them keep watching, they're not gonna keep watching. Yeah. When you're making YouTube videos, just try to keep the content interesting. Try to keep it focused on your topic. And above all, just, you know, have fun doing it. If somebody else had the question, then you're going to have the same question too. So just try to work your way through it. Don't overthink it and just do it. The next thing you need is interesting content. This is the most important part. You have to have content that people want to watch. Uh, it's, you know, you have to have something that you want to talk about. Uh, make sure that you are correct about what you're talking about because once this video goes up it is permanent and you cannot change it afterwards. If you do take a video down and put it back up, it really, really affects the algorithm and the way that video, video gets seen. Also, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't try to over elaborate. Just have some good content. It's a question you had. Answer the question or do the topic that you're presenting on and then move on to the next one. So for your content again, try to be intentional about what you're saying. Try to keep a focused mind. Don't ramble too much. It makes editing way harder in the end. And then know where you're going. So when I end this shot, I'm also kind of thinking about the next shot of what's to come. It is very important to pay attention to your background. Nobody wants to see the trash pile hiding behind your shed like I have here. I walk past this point many, many times in every single one of my videos. Very rarely do you actually see it. I'm very intentional on this because people want to see a beautiful farm. They don't want to think about, oh, that old Kansas farmer that's got junk all over his field. So be very, very, very intentional about what is in your background as you're shooting. So when you're trying to shoot, be very intentional about what's behind you. You wouldn't want to see the back of the screen. Instead, I would be over here or with my other arm and I'd get the beautiful background behind me or, as I said, the audience behind me here. Now there are four basic types of camera shots I use. I use the stand and talk, the walk and talk, the action shot, and the time lapse. This shot is very self-explanatory. Just stand there and talk. So see now just started recording because I have a half second delay. So we have the basic camera shots, the stand and talk. I just stand here and talk. I could be doing stuff with my hands, but it's very rigid. You're not really moving much. It's not interesting because the background's always the same. It's a very static way of shooting. There is nothing like a walk and talk. You get a walk, you get a talk, and people get to see other stuff when they get bored of you talking. Okay, so the second kind of shot is one of my most common shots that I use. It was actually, as far as I know, made famous by Curtis Stone, uh, Mark Gardner out of Canada. I'm sure most people have actually heard of him. It's called, well, I call it the Curtis Walk and Talk, because literally he would just wander around his greenhouse and talk and talk and talk about stuff sometimes. Sometimes he'd just ramble, sometimes he wouldn't, but he would just walk around. And I found that it creates a really good shot because as you're wandering around your farm, actually, you're showing different perspectives of your greenhouses, your plants, your setup, and it just keeps it interesting. Even if you are rambling about something that's really boring, 
people are still seeing things that they want to see in the shot. Action shots can take many different forms. One could be moving across the screen. Another could be moving away from the screen. You move towards. You can also do the double one where you split, where you come towards the screen or away from the screen, just like this. Go, whatever, right by the camera. And it gets you coming and going. And it makes a really, really nice action shot that way because... Time lapse is, again, pretty self-explanatory. Use a time lapse setting on your phone or the hyperlapse. If you use a time lapse, you might have to speed it up several times in a clip and re-record it at two times speed to get it fast enough. The hyperlapse, on the other hand, can turn literally hours into minutes, but you still might have to speed that up as well because sometimes it takes a lot of time to do things. So again, the time lapse shot's a really good way to just uh, purvey a really long drudgery task into something that looks really cool, really fun, and really quick. Great time to add music, get more engagement, and just all around, you know, show something that could be otherwise really, really boring. The conclusion is a very important part. You need to sum up what you're talking about. Also, give people something to be interested about. Also, never forget to ask people to like and subscribe because that is the way your YouTube videos will spread across the YouTube algorithm. Most importantly, smile while you're talking. This is the last people are going to see you in this video and a smiling face always makes a better impression than just cutting out of it. And as you will see, I forgot to shoot my conclusion, so I shot it back at the home base. So I hope you enjoy. So that pretty much sums up the basics of how to shoot footage for your YouTube video. Going into the editing process is a whole nother game, which we will not go into in this video, just simply because of the ability to record and shoot at the same time through the phone while I'm recording on the phone, and I'm also displaying it on the screen behind me there. So, hope you all liked me saw your day. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day. So that pretty much concludes the uh, presentation I did down there. I'm still working on the editing of it to put in the slides with the sh stuff I shot there. I did a lot of speaking in between the stuff you saw, but I'm back at the home base now, trying to get things sorted out so I can get this out tomorrow. Got a lot of starts growing back there behind me. Getting the farm cranked up for this year. Uh, down there at Mother's News Fair, I got to thank them. That was a great time down there. I had a lot of fun, did two presentations. Hope to be working with them in the future. So hope to see you there or here or next week as well. So thank y'all. Have a good day.